brand new Falcon Acoustics B139s. They really are a thing of beauty. Lovely drivers. Very, very nice. Base only. Don't use these up into the mid range. Beautiful things. are coming along lovely anyway we're not here to talk about them we're here to do these so this morning I'm going to get these covers stripped painted and reclothed and they're massive without a doubt they are the largest pair of covers um, I will will have ever reclothed um, and I very much doubt I'll ever do anything as big as this again. Yeah, very difficult to find the cloth that I like using in this size, but the um, upholstery company I buy my cloth from um, went out, um, all out for me, and um, got me two pieces the right size. So excellent stuff. Right. Let's make sure the cloth fits and then we can get these stripped and redone. Right, so cover frame stripped and vacuumed, so now I need to paint it. But interestingly, all around is staple holes. I reckon they stapled this together and then um, glued it as well. And once the glue was dry, they unpicked all the staples. But it's an elaborate frame, it really is. Um, 
I would want to critically listen to these speakers without this on. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to do the sound much um, many favours in terms of edge diffraction and things like that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting frame. This is at the bottom of the frame. And this partly blanks off the bottom of the transmission line for the two mid-base drivers. If you put it the other way round, it covers up one of the mid-base drivers. How weird. Painter man, painter man, I wish I was a painter man. See why people call these the bird cage, can't you? Right, enough of this, I'm going to crack on. Right, I haven't been filming this because it's an absolute ball lake. Um, yeah, it's not easy. So one is all stapled up. Um, I now need to trim it and then get the Velcro on it. But yeah, largely it's gone really, really well. I'm trying to keep the grain running really nicely. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to film this. Even if I put it on time lapse, it'll be so long because um, it takes quite a bit of doing these are yeah very difficult frames So before I put the cover on the other one, my nice new B139s which have gone in there perfectly. They just fit straight in. All our drivers cleaned up, tested, perfect. Um, and I've put some foam in the transmission line openings at the bottom. So as you can see down there, some nice really open cell foam perfect interestingly the opening for the middle transmission line when the covers are on is partly blanked by that um, baton that goes across and i think there's a reason for that i've seen it in the measurements so um yeah minor effect right, a bit of a close-up look around them 
with the covers on. <laughs> they were not easy to do, but they look perfect. New badges down the bottom. Bit of sun bleach in here, unfortunately. I guess this one was probably near a window. Um, I can't sand that out. They do have a little bit of sun bleach in here and there, but all our water stains have gone. And they do look really tidy. Um, looking back at the photos of them when I first got them here. Yeah, very pleased. Right, so our TDL reference standard speakers are finished. And they have been quite a bit of work. Um, a big amount of time waiting for parts as well. Um, but uh, yeah, super pleased with how they've turned out. Um, I've had to listen to them. Unfortunately, I can't really listen to these in an environment that suits them. <clears throat> but um, yeah, what I've heard is really good. I mean, the, the detail and clarity is, yeah, it's, it's right up there. Um, and now with the new components that are in the crossover, and the upgrades that have been done on the um, mid-range tweeter and super tweeter circuit um, yeah you can hear that and it'll only get better as the components um, bed in so capacitors form up um, they need a bit of time to kind of form up and run in almost before they're at their best and sort of smooth out um, capacitor burning is a thing <laughs> i'm really sorry especially on electrolytics um, yeah, the new B139 woofers as well, they've worked brilliantly. Again, they're going to need a running in period to supple up the rubber um, before they're at their best. So, um, yeah, they'll just get improved the more or get, just get better the more they're used. Um, so, yeah, super pleased with them. Um, I've actually put a couple of resistors on the binding posts at the back to slightly attenuate the um, drivers in the middle here. So our mid base drivers, our tweeters and super tweeter, just to bring the whole lot down. Um, because I think measuring with different amps, um, they just need that level bringing down. And I suspect those resistors will probably come out when the woofers are bedded in. Um, it just balances it out during that run-in period. Um, they're only a couple of ohms. Um, but yeah, it, to me, it just balances it out. So probably when um, Chris has been listening to these for a while, he can play with those in or out of circuit. Um, it's probably going to be a bit room-dependent, really, and taste-dependent. But um, yeah, these are now sounding fantastic, measuring really well. Um, better than they originally did even with the new woofers now they've got the new components in um yeah a lot better so here's the uh, on-axis measurement and you'll see from my measurements from 150 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz we are i would say plus minus one and a half db and that's crazy Absolutely crazy. Um, before the integration between the um, tweeters and super tweeter, it wasn't particularly great. There was a little bit of a dip there. I think that was down to capacitors because that seems to have come out now. Um, and now when I'm going horizontally, so on on-axis measurement, then 15 degrees, 25 degrees and 35 degrees, really all that's happening is the output is dropping from the drivers in the middle. Um, they are staying in phase all the way through. There's no real big dips or anything, which is amazing, especially with that tweeter super tweeter um, combination. Vertically, you still really want to be on that super tweeter axis. Um, there's a bit of comb filtering that goes on between the two tweeters and that super tweeter. That's really the only thing to bear in mind, but <clears throat> to me, I would have these not firing straight forward, but towed in slightly to the listener. Again, that's personal preference and room, but um, they just stay so consistent off axis, which 
I guess is why they're called the reference standard. <laughs> um, and now with the new components in there, the spectra of decay, man, super clean. So yeah, I think with the measurements, these are living up to their name. Um, very, very pleased with them. Cosmetically, they needed a lot of work. Um, I ended up giving them a third coat of black and the original Duratex or whatever that was on there, which is like a textured finish um, with a new fresh paint of uh, coat of paint, hasn't been applied particularly evenly. There are patches where it's more textured than others, um, but you've got to look for that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not bad at all. Um, but yeah, they're really, really good and finished. <laughs> All right, I'll stick some photos in and catch you on the next epic adventure.